Good. Uh, so yeah, hello. As uh, Mika said, I'm Juliana Melini, and I would like to present you today um, a simulation of demand responsive transport using a dynamic scheduling tool with Sumo. So, um, okay, what's uh, what is demand responsive transport or DRT? It is um, a service, a transport service with uh, no timetable, no fixed routes, and no fixed stops. And as uh, Professor Wogenberger uh, explained before, we have two main uh, types of DRTs. We have, as you can see in the videos, um, on one side, uh, shared DRTs or ride pooling, in which um, the person or request can be shared. And then we have a uh, ride hailing or a uh, taxi services. Um, DRT can be already simulated in Sumo via the taxi device. Uh, vehicles with this device can receive trip uh, reservations from persons in the simulation, which are uh, managed by a dispatch algorithm. Um, Sumo counts already with some dispatch algorithms, but for shared DRT uh, services, these have uh, some limitations. But um, yeah, uh, new dispatch algorithms uh, can be implemented via Tracy. And also, uh, since this year, this was uh, really important uh, because Tracy enables the uh, redispatching of taxis. So dynamic rerouting of taxis is now possible. Um, so the goal of this work um, was to develop a simulation tool, which is called uh, DRT Online, to simulate uh, shared DRT services with a dynamic dispatcher. And I decided to divide the code in two, in two parts uh, with the goal of enabling an easier implementation of further uh, dispatching algorithm which trace it to uh, other users. Um, I would like to uh, explain you uh, first how uh, the tool works. So the main, main module is the uh, scheduling module, um, which is responsible of manage the vehicles requests and dispatching the vehicles with the uh, found routes. As inputs, we need the at least the Sumo network, the DRT vehicles and the DRT requests. Um, but other uh, Sumo inputs, like for example, surrounding traffic or uh, stops and options, uh, general options for the simulation can be uh, also given. So uh, Tracy starts the simulation and goes for the first step, the first uh, for the first simulation step. And the first uh, important step is to read and process the um, simulations and add them to the um, reservation pool here. And um, uh, when the reservations are processed, uh, these were uh, some new attributes are added to the reservation. And after that, if we have new uh, reservation or unassigned reservations, the, um, the tool will ask for the uh, DRT fleet. Um, and um, after that, uh, if some reservations have been uh, already served in a previous step, this uh, will be removed from the uh, reservation pool and the remain reservation will be uh, classified. The next, next step is um, to call uh, the dial ride problem solver or DARP solver. Uh, which is responsible uh, to find the best routes for each vehicle based on the DRT fleet, the reservations, and the defined constraints. Um, and 
actually the next step, which is uh, the intercell liner programming, um, is actually a part of the uh, DARP solver. But there are uh, many methods to find these routes that apply an ELP solver or need an ELP solver. So I integrated um, the Python solver for ELP uh, pulp. So if you want to add new DARP solvers method, uh, you can also uh, just uh, use this um, LP solver uh, from the from the main module for, from the scheduling module. And after the optimal routes for each vehicle are found, the tool will check if uh, the new route is actually better than the current one, because it ha can happen that uh, some uh, methods to solve the dial dial right problem are not exact. So uh, it can happen that in further steps, the solution funds are actually not better than the current one. So the tool is checking for that as well. Um, and if the new route is better than the current one, then the tool will dispatch the vehicle with this new route. After all routes are checked, the uh, Tracy or the tool calls for the next simulation steps a step and the loop starts again. Um, okay, so as I mentioned before, the DARP solver, which is the method used to find the routes, is called by the scheduling module. And as Professor um, Bogenberg has explained before as well, the or there are a lot of DRT services, and there are also a lot of methods to find the best routes for these services. And depending on the method used, the results can be totally different. So uh, my goal here was to yeah, facilitate the implementation of different methods since, uh, yeah, for that reason. And currently, uh, the default server uh, supports the simulation for uh, shared DRT services, and it is based in the method of Alonso Mora et al. Um, the algorithm is able to find an exact solution, but, but this could take really long. And uh, for, for this reason, uh, you can set a time out uh, for the searching of routes to allow for a faster, but not exact uh, solution. Um, so the method has uh, three steps. In the first two steps, all possible routes for every vehicle will be uh, fine doing an exhaustive search. And after that, uh, the, an integrated liner programming will be solved to find the optimal routes for the entire DRT service. Uh, here we can see the objective which consider uh, three different uh, costs. The first one is the travel time for uh, the trips. Then we have a large and constant, uh, a large constant to penalize the rejection of requests. And the third cost is a uh, small cost and constant uh, to prevent the use of several vehicles if the request can be served with fewer vehicles at a uh, comparable cost. Um, yeah, finally, I would like to uh, show you uh, with an example how the tool works and which results can be obtained. So for this, I defined a simulation scenario for the city of Brunswick. We have uh, 50 DRT vehicles with a capacity of six uh, seats operating in the blue area. The simulation is from 6 to 10 a.m. and in this time window, 758 uh, people's uh, persons uh, made 956 uh, trip requests. 
Um, the network and the demand are based on the publicly available Brunswick scenario. You have here the link to that scenario. Um, the simulation step was set to 10 seconds. So every 10 seconds, the tool checks if new reservations are made. And we can also uh, define some constraints with the tool. Um, for example, that the maximum waiting time for the pickup, um, in this case, I set it to 50 minutes, or uh, we can also say that the uh, travel time with the um, DRT service should not surpass a factor or uh, be uh, larger than twice the travel time with a direct route with a private car. Um, so we can, uh, here we can see some extracts of the simulations. The red vehicles are the DRT vehicles and the yellow ones are the surrounding traffic. I hide the last for a better view. And uh, here we can see the persons in blue, which are uh, making some requests and the uh, DRT vehicles in red are picking them up and bringing them to their uh, destinations. And here, for example, uh, we can see that uh, the, the trips are shared. So here we have already two persons and the third one has been picked up by uh, the same car. And uh, in the comment box, uh, you can see uh, what the simulation is uh, doing for each step. So here the network has been loaded and then we can see that every uh, for, for each uh, simulation step, the tool runs the dispatcher. So for example, here um, the, the route uh, for this vehicle to pick and drop off the first request. And in the next simulation step, a new reservation arrives. And uh, the tool found that the same vehicle as before can also serve these reservations. So the route is uh, changed dynamically. And yes, some uh, results as example. So with the tool, you can uh, still generate the standard SUMO outputs. In this case, I used the uh, trip and stop information outputs of SUMO to show some examples of the analysis you can make with the simulation. So maybe first the simulation um, or the dur duration of the simulation was of uh, 95 minutes on average. Uh, this is equivalent to a 3.2 real time factor. Here in the table, we can see some results for each uh, simulation run. Uh, I run the same scenario five times. Um, we can also see that the entire uh, vehicle fleet of 50 vehicles were never used. The maximum number was uh, 46 and also that not all requests uh, have been served. Um, we can also, also have uh, some metrics or uh, do some analysis for each passengers. So here in the figure, I have the waiting time, the length and duration of the route and the uh, direct Root factor, which is the relation between the travel time with the DRT service and with the private car uh, for each uh, passenger. So here in the waiting time, you can see that um, most of the passengers were picked up um, between uh, 15 minutes, which was one of the constraints set. But in a few cases, this um, time was surpassed. And um, this can be related or is related to congestion and some delays in the simulation. And finally, as, as conclusion, as we saw, uh, this tool 
with this tool, you can uh, simulate uh, shared DRT services uh, with a dynamic dispatcher. The tool is already available in Sumo Tools and is being um, and as being open source and freely accessible, it can be a helpful uh, tool for transport planners and researchers. But it has some limitations since for bigger scenarios, the computing times can be really long. And setting a time out uh, for, the, for searching the routes um, can, uh, can give a faster solution, but not exact one. And in some cases cannot be good enough. And as further work uh, will be relevant to implement some heuristic methods to solve the dial right problem, like a variable neighborhood search or adaptive large uh, neighborhood search, which will be a better solution for uh, large scenarios and also to add new um, service options or features like DRT as a first or last mile and um, booking as a group. Yes, so thank you for your attention. And if you have questions, you can ask them now or uh, later in one room. Thank you. <laughs>